I think color grading is one of the best ways to really put your own sort of style into your photos, as well as like really selling a feeling with your photos. It can really set you apart from other photographers. So in Affinity Photo, there are three things I just about always use whenever I color grade an image. So I'm just going to import an image that I got from Unsplash. And with that, we'll get started color grading this image. So the first tool I'm going to show you today that I use is going to be a gradient map. So we can add a gradient map by coming down into our adjustments and then going to gradient map. And it's going to look a little weird here because of the colors that they chose. But basically what this is doing is we have reds going into our shadows here. We have green going into our midtones and blue going into our highlights. You can think of this as like a gradient where you have your shadows going all the way to your highlights. And the first thing you pretty much always want to do when you add a gradient map is change this blend mode down here to soft light. Soft light will generally give you like the best looking image. You can experiment around with some of the other ones, but soft light will generally give you the best one. And the first thing we're going to do here is come into this little midtones node and we're actually just going to delete it. And what we're going to try and do is create like a nice teal and orange look with this. So we'll click on our shadows over here and we'll add a color and I'm going to go into hue and we're going to add a nice kind of teal color. And this will take some kind of playing around to see which one you like best. But we're just going to start out with that. Then we'll come into our highlights here just by clicking on it, going into our color, and we'll add a nice orange. And again, it's just kind of a matter of playing around and seeing what you like. I think somewhere right about there will kind of look OK. And we're going to change our shadows again just to see what we like. And I think that right there is going to be pretty good. And it does look a little harsh right now, but what we can do is we can come into our opacity and we can bring this all the way to zero. Usually I like to bring it all the way to zero and then slowly bring it up until it's at a point that I like. That way you're not overdoing things. And I think right around 50 is going to look pretty good for this image. But basically that's gradient map for you. And you can see the before and the after. It's just kind of like a nice subtle teal and orange look that we just added to this. And you can see how fast we did that. It's a really quick way of just adding like a really simple color grade to any image. And it gives you enough control to where you can get it exactly where you want it. So one more thing I wanted to mention with gradient maps is when you're choosing your colors for your shadows and your highlights, you're going to want to pick complementary colors. That's generally going to look the best. So in this example, we chose blue for our shadows and kind of like this lighter orange for our highlights, which is considered a teal and orange look, even though this is more of a blue. And if you want to find some nice complementary colors to use, you can come into colors.adobe.com and they have this nice little color wheel you can use and you can move these little nodes around and you can kind of pick some different colors that you want. And we can copy these hex codes and we can bring them right into Affinity so we can choose our highlights here, go into color, and then you want to go into your hex slider and you can just paste this in right here and then boom we have that color now and now we can come in here and take this color for our shadows so we'll just copy that hex code click on our shadows and bring up the hex slider and then just paste that right in and boom just like that we have nice complementary colors to use in this but that's basically the gist of the gradient map. It's a really nice way of adding like a really quick color grade to any image, and it gives you enough control over an image to get it the way you like it, while not seeming too complex, but it does fall short in like really taking control over exactly what colors you want to use. The next tool we're going to use is going to be the curves tool. So we can come into our adjustment layers here and click on curves, and that will add a curves adjustment layer to our image. And generally, curves is the best way to add contrast to an image. So when we look at this bar, you actually have your shadows down here and then your highlights up here. Similar to the gradient map, you have your shadows on the left and your highlights on the right. So the best way to use curves to add contrast to an image is by clicking three points. You're going to want one on this little cross section here, one right in your midtones, and then one down here. And then what you're going to want to do with these is you want to bring your highlights up just a little bit and your shadows down a little bit. And that is what we call an S-curve. And that is a really nice way of getting full control over your contrast. So like if we really wanted to boost our highlights, we could bring this up a lot, but then we'd probably be clipping. So we'll just bring them back down. And one more thing I wanted to show you is if you wanted to have like your blacks faded, you can bring this point up along this wall here, 
and you can see we're adding gray into our shadows, and that will give us some nice faded blacks. Now with the Curves tool, you can also color grade too. It's not just adding like contrast and stuff. So if you go and you have your RGB drop down over here, you can click on this master, and we can go into something like our reds. And we're gonna add a point in the middle there, and we're gonna bring our reds up in the highlights, and then we're actually gonna, we're gonna add another point in our shadows, and we're gonna bring down that. So basically what this is doing is we're adding reds into our highlights and we're subtracting them in our shadows. And just like our gradient map, this looks pretty strong. So what we can do is come into our opacity, bring that all the way down to zero again, and then bring it up until we find something we like. I actually kind of like it a little bit more strong with this one, so we'll kind of keep it around 75. And we'll close this out. And that's basically the curves tab for you. Generally, I just like having it for Contrast, I don't really do much color grading in here, but it's definitely something you could do. And with that, this brings us on to our final adjustment, which is going to be selective color. So we'll click on the selective color here, and this is actually going to be my favorite way of actually color grading an image. Because with selective color, you can actually change different parts of different colors to the way that you want them. So if we see in our color here, and we can change our blacks, our neutrals, and our whites, just like the other tools that we used. But now you can see that we have our magentas, blues, cyans, greens, yellows, and reds. So we can go in and change each of those individual colors so we can, you know, make them pop a little bit more. And then with selective color, it can be a little tricky because you only have cyan, magenta, and yellow to work with. But if you think about it, let's say we wanted to add blues into our blacks. So we can, you know, add our cyan, and we can probably add some magenta to it, and that will give us kind of a nice blue. We can even take away some of the yellow. And there we go, now we have blue in our shadows. Because when you think about it, if you're adding cyan, and you're adding magenta, it's going to be adding blue, and if you take away yellow, it's going to be even more blue. But if we were to do something like take away our cyan, so we're going to get pink, take away the magentas, and now we have just pure white because we don't have any color. But if we add yellow, we can add yellow, or if we bring our magentas all the way up, now we have red. You can kind of play around because I know it's going to be a little tricky to remember exactly which ones are which, but for now we're just going to add a little bit of blue into our shadows. And you can also come down into this black slider down here. You can kind of adjust a little bit of contrast with this. So you know we can bring it back to kind of fade out our blacks, or we can bring it up to add a little bit more contrast to them and really darken them. I'm just going to leave that one how it is for right now. Then we can come up into the color tabs and we'll go into our whites. And now we're gonna add some orange into our highlights. So we can take away some of the cyan because we want to have warmer colors. We can add some yellow and then we can actually add some magenta into it too. And that will give us kind of some warmer highlights. And with this one, I am gonna come down to the black slider here. I'm gonna reduce it just a little bit. So we're adding a little bit of contrast into our highlights. So with that, we have a really simple teal and orange look, but now we can get really specific with what we want to edit. So let's say, so this water here looks like a pretty cyan water. So what we can do is we can actually make this more of a brighter blue. So we'll come in here and we'll kind of adjust these until we find something that we like. And just like the other tools, it's kind of a matter of playing around and waiting until you find something you like. I think that actually looks kind of good. Yeah, so we added just a little bit more color into the water there and into the sky. We can actually come into our blues and that might be able to edit a little bit more. Yeah, you kind of get some darker parts. We're kind of getting her shirt too. But it's just really a matter of playing around with these and finding something you like. So for example, now that we have added blue into the sky and the water, we can come into our reds or our yellows since her hair is kind of that warmer color and we can actually adjust that so that her hair ends up kind of popping out against the background a little bit. So you can really see how far you can take your grades just with selective color. You can really do an entire color grade just with this tool, but it's really nice to have the other tools on top of it. So it's just a matter of kind of playing around and eventually finding something you like. And just like the other ones, this does look pretty harsh. So again, we'll come into our opacity We'll reduce it and we'll kind of bring it back up until we find something we like. I think right about there is going to look okay. And so with that, we have our before and our after with our selective color adjustment. 
and I'm actually going to add the curves adjustment back on top of it. And there we go, we basically have a fully fledged color grade. And in this one, we only used curves and selective color. We could have added a gradient map to take it even a little bit further, but I think these two are just enough for this image. But usually with my images, I like to do like a really simple color grade in gradient map, and then I'll add some contrast and maybe mess around a little bit with the colors inside of curves, and then I'll go into selective color and really take it that extra step to make it the way I want it to. One thing I want to mention too, is when you are color grading a person, try and make sure their skin tones stay as natural as possible. Because like you saw with a gradient map, it's super easy to have the skin tones look very like unnatural. Because like if we go into our midtones here and we change something, we'll say like a nice red, and we'll just kind of mess around with these to get something kind of weird. And we'll change this to soft light. And even if, you know, we bring down this, you can see that her skin tones, even at like just, you know, 15% look really red because we have that red in the mid-tones there. And the other adjustments, you can kind of mess up the skin tones, but it's a lot harder in something like curves or selective color. So just be cautious and make sure you're not messing up any of their skin tones to make them look unnatural. Something else I wanted to say is if you come into your adjustment layers here and you double click on this, and let's say you really dialed in each of these settings and you got it to a really nice thing that you like and you want to be able to use it on other images. You can actually just add a preset in here and we'll name it something like teal orange. And we'll hit OK. And then in here you can see that we now have our preset. And we'll just quickly delete this layer to show you what we can do. So in here if we click on our preset, it adds our preset and now we have exactly what we had before. And now we can use this on different images as well. Like I said, it's really easy to go overboard with these color grades. That's why I really like using the opacity slider in here so that we can't go overboard. Because, you know, if we have this all the way up, you can really see that the blues are kind of taking over the shadows. That's why it's really nice to dial these sort of things down to get it the way you want it to without overdoing it. But these are basically the tools that I pretty much always use to color grade my images. But thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.